In this video, I will be doing a tutorial on the two-way repeated measures ANOVA statistic using SPSS version 22. So a two-way repeated measures ANOVA is also known as a two-factor repeated measures ANOVA, a two-factor or two-way ANOVA with repeated measures or within within subjects ANOVA and it compares the mean differences between groups that have been split on two within subject factors, also known as independent variables. A two-way repeated measures ANOVA is often used in studies where you have measured a dependent variable over two or more time points, or when subjects have undergone two or more conditions, i.e. the two factors in this example that I'll be presenting are male presenters and female presenters. The primary purpose of a two-way repeated measures ANOVA is to understand if there is an interaction between these two factors on the dependent variable. There's also some assumptions that you have to make sure are met in order to conduct this analysis, otherwise the output you get will not be statistically accurate. So the first assumption is your dependent var variable should be measured at the continuous level, i.e. they are interval or ratio variables. An example of a continuous variable includes revision time, intelligence such as IQ score, exam performance measured from 0 to 100, and weight. That's just some examples. The second assumption is that your, within, your two within subject factors, i.e. your two independent variables, should consist of at least two categorical related groups or matched pairs. Related groups indicates that the same subjects are presented in both groups and the reason that it is possible to have the same subjects in each group is because that each subject has been measured on two occasions on the same dependent variables. That's where the repeated part of the stat comes in. The third assumption is that there should be no significant outliers in any combination of the related groups. Outliers are simply single data points within your data that do not follow the usual pattern. For example, in a study of 100 students' IQ scores, where the mean score was 108, with only a small variation between the students, one student had a score of 156, which is extremely unusual, and may even put her in the top 1% of IQ scores glo globally. So therefore, that individual would be an outlier. The problem with outliers is that they can have a negative effect on the two-way repeated measures and over and distort the differences between the related groups, whether increasing or decreasing the scores in the independent variable, which reduces the accuracy of your results. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to determine if there are any significant outliers using SPSS. I won't be discussing out of that in this video, but in the future, I may be doing some more videos on that. But in the meantime, just Google it and you can find it out. The fourth assumption is that the distribution of the dependent variable in each combination of the related groups should be approximately normally distributed, i.e. they should be homogeneous. We talk about the two-way repe repeated measures ANOVA only requiring approximately normal data because it is quite robust to violations of normality, meaning that the assumption can be a little violated and still provide valid results. You can test for normality using the Shapiro walk test of normality using residuals, which is again easily tested for using SPSS. And the fifth assumption, which is quite specific to the statistic, is known as sphericity. And it is known, sphericity is the variances of the differences between all combinations of related groups, and this needs to be equal. And whenever you do a two way repeated measures design, SPS will automatically calculate the Mount least test of sphericity, which will determine if this test is significant, then you have violated assumption 5. But yeah, we'll get to that in the output. So the data that I'm going to be using is just fictional data. The data set that I'll be using it consists of a group of 12 males that have been tested on given a memory test on four different occasions under four different conditions. The first one is males who were given the test by a male wearing a lab coat. The second condition 
is the males being tested by a ma male wearing casual clothing. The third condition is if the male is being tested by a female wearing a lab coat. And the fourth condition is the male is being tested by a female wearing casual clothing. So in this study, or in this data set, our hypothesis is that the gender and the type of clothing of the presenter who is presenting the, the memory test will have an effect on the score, on the outcome of the recipient's responses. And we have two independent variables in this study. One is uh, the gender of the individual giving the test, and the other is the type of clothing that the individual is wearing. So that's two variables, which each have two levels, which makes it a two by two, two-way repeated analysis and over. So let's just get into SPSS here. There we go. To do the analysis, this, the two-way repeated measures ANOVA, we go to General Linear Model and Repeated Measures. Now here we have to name our factors that we want to analyze. And because our, we have two independent variables, one being the gender of the test administrators and two being the, the, the clothing that they wear, casual or professional, we're going to name our first within subject factor as gender. And because there's only two possible genders, or at least in this data set, two possible genders we can have, we'll have two levels. And the same goes with clothing because there is casual and there is lab slash professional clothing. Now, once we've entered now within subject factors, we have to define them. So as we can see here, our within subject variables are gender, comma, clothing. Gender represents the one, and clothing represents the two here. So to enter our first, our first variable into the within subject variables box, we add male lab coat to one, and male casual to the next one because the type of clothing is changing but the gender at being one is still the same. Next we add the females because the gender has changed being two but the clothing here is still the same such as there. So we add that and then female casual. And now you can see as long as it's like in a, a logical and consistent order it doesn't matter how you group them but as long as, as I said, it's consistent, you should be fine. So after this, we kind of want to go to options. And I always prefer to select descriptives, descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogenized tests. Okay, so our output shows us the main effects and the partial interactions or significant interactions between our variables and our factors. So this first table isn't very interesting. It just tells us what we already know and the different measures and the different factors and what they mean. Our descriptive statistics tell us that the mean score or the mean memory score for males who were presenting the test in lab coats was 7.8 males who dressed casually and presented the test the recipient scored 8.7 when females administered the test in a lab coat the mean was 10.6 and when females in casual clothing um, administered the test the recipients had a mean score of 15 so we can already see this differences between the different groups and the different time points being tested. We can really skip the multivariate test because that's just a uh, basic ANOVA and doesn't really help us or doesn't really tell us anything that we need to know. 
in this type of statistic. And here we get to Mochley's test of sphericity. So sphericity only really makes sense when you have three or more levels within a factor. It's impossible when you only have two and doesn't really apply here. So if we had three levels or more, then Mochley's test of sphericity would come into play. But for now, as long as we can determine the homogeneity of variables between our two groups, our two factors, and they're equal or they're homogeneous, then we'll be all right. Our assumption of homogeneity or normal group distribution is met. So our test of within subject effects is the main table we want to be looking at. So our, our gender factor has an F of 123 and is significant very significant and has quite a substantial ADA effect, effect size. So what this tells us is not a gender between the, the scores, but the gender of the individuals administering the tests leads to significantly different means between the groups. And the same thing goes for clothing. So because I have a significant interaction between my two factors, both gender and clothing, with an F score of 29.65 and a significance value of less than 0 0.001 with a partial rate of squared of 0 0.729 it becomes difficult to interpret and it is debatable whether one should continue to analyze main effects such as gender or clothing when you have a significant interaction some textbooks say that you shouldn't and some recommend that you can continue to if you feel confident that there is uh, a significant main effect. And because I'm confident that females as a group, looking at the descriptives, females as a group results in a higher score on the memory test, regardless of whether they were in casual clothing or lab coats, it suggests that the main effect of being female is true across all the other variables in the data that's what a main effect is. It means it's true across all other variables throughout the enti entire data set that this is the, the effect that influences everything else. So to test that I can do a couple of uh, paired sample t-tests testing or can isolate at the, the lab coat and can test males male lab coat and female lab coat and then isolate at um, casual comparing male and fe female casual clothing and if females result in a st statistically significant difference both times then I can continue to assert that females as a group have more influence over the result of the male subjects me memory tests than any other factor and I can report that in my analysis so to do that I simply go to analyze Compare means paired sample t-test, compare oscillate at lab coats, so male lab coats 1 and female lab coats 2. And then again oscillate at um, casual clothing, male casual and female casual. And then I can go OK. And here we go. Our output tells us that there is a statistically significant difference between the mean scored uh, from the participants when males, when females wearing a lab coat compared to males wearing a lab coat and as well as when when you isolate the casual clothing variable females still result in a statistically significant difference than the males and to test the variable of clothing itself and to eliminate gender as a variable we can go do the same thing again paired sample t-test but then we isolate at genders and not at the level or the type of clothing so a male lab coat versus a male casual and a female lab coat versus female casual would this result in a statistically significant difference between the groups but isolated at type of clothing and we can see that it does not lab coat versus male casual clothing there is not a statistically significant difference 
However, when females <laughs> change their clothing, there is a statistically significant difference in the score. So perhaps men want to try and impress females who are dressed casually, and thus they try to achieve a higher score on the test. And that is how you can interpret the main effects if you so wish to. This type of testing is also known as post hoc testing, meaning that it's done after the main analysis and you just want to see if there's any interesting results. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching this video.